Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diachronic Yoster on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be taking a look at my top 17 guns and armor in Beyond Light. So every single item on this list will have some type of value in one way or another. Some things are just really big DPS hounds or really good time to kill. Some things just have a particular value in a very specific activity. Some things are replacement for those sunset weapons. Every single item on this list is going to have a very specific value that admittedly is valuable to me that may also be valuable to you. Because I know a lot of people out there are wondering which things have value out of the 50 or so exotic armors and different weapons, which one should I focus on? Which ones have the value that I will want? And in this video, I'm going to be talking about not only the ones that I like, but as well as those values. And there's definitely going to be a lot of weapons and armors that are not on this list that you may like. For example, the new Whispering Waveframe Grenade Launcher, I don't really like. A lot of people use it for ad clearing, for killing those red health enemies, but then you have a special weapon dedicated for red health and you don't have any DPS. So for my particular needs, I don't really like it. But you may also like it. Maybe you have a very specific reason that you do like it. If you do, let me know in the comments down below because I would like to discover what its value is. And as a final disclaimer in this video before we get started is that there will be no new raid weapons on this list outside of the rocket launcher because frankly, I have not gotten any of these weapons, I have not tested the new perks on these weapons, and I do not know the random rolls because LightGG do not show these weapons. So until then, I really cannot give you any information. But there are new weapons, you can see them in collections, but you can't see them on LightGG. Moving on to the first item on this list is going to be the no time to explain 340 rpm kinetic exotic pulse rifle and i gotta say this thing is really really strong in pve it allows you to have near infinite ammo in your clip as well as an extra damage option in the form of the time slip in pvp it basically is a better version of the cold denial which if you didn't see my video from last season i said the cold denial at a 0.7 time to kill is going to be one of the strongest weapons in pvp and this is just a better version of it it has a damage perk it has better handling stability and range and it also has a lot of good perks to make it a very viable option. So if you haven't gotten the No Time to Explain, technically I believe you have to own the Season Pass or the Deluxe Edition, but you should definitely get it if you don't have it because it's really good. Coming up at number two, we have the Cloud Strike, a very special 140 RPM exotic sniper rifle, which is not currently in the game. We imagine that the exotic quest for that will show up very soon, but we do know that it's going to be quite strong because of its perks and its stats. If you've never heard of it, its main perk, Mortal Polaris, will actually give your precision final blows to generate a lightning bolt at the target location. And from what we've seen in the trailers, it acts kind of like a ricochet killing the nearby target. And with that, rapid precision hits create a lightning storm at the point of impact, presumably hitting many enemies with many lightning bolts, and that also has good effect in PvE. And with that, it's also 140 RPM, meaning it has a very high aim assistance of 68, which is par with that of the Beloved and the Adored. So whenever this thing releases, you're going to be seeing it crush in the Crucible. It's an excellent option. Moving on to number three on this list, we have the Eyes of Tomorrow Power Exotic Rocket Launcher. Now, now, from what I understand, this is going to be the raid exotic for the new Deepstone Crypt raid, and this one is very interesting. If you've never heard of it, it's special perk, Eyes on All. This weapon is capable of tracking and firing at multiple targets simultaneously while still only using one ammo at a time, allowing for a lot more damage, a lot more kills, and it really does remind me of some type of combination of Wardcliffe and Galahorn that I've been looking forward to. And with that adaptive ordinance, killing four or more combatants with a single volley increases the damage of the next volley. In my opinion, this feels like it's going to be more of a major killing kind of weapon where you kill multiple enemies in an area rather than boss damage, but maybe it could be used for boss damage if you get a lot of enemies around it. This is definitely something I'm looking forward to and hopefully I'll get to drop very soon. Coming up at number four, probably the weapon that I'm most excited for is going to be the exotic sword known as the Lament. And currently, the weapon quest is out and you can get the weapon today. This weapon is definitely poised to be one of the highest DPS weapons in the game for not only being a sword, but a number of perks that'll increase damage. If you rev up the weapon, you get increased damage, shield bypass, and barrier shield actual effects, you can kill barrier champions. 
And on top of that, you gain stacks when dealing damage with revved attacks. And on top of that, the stacks increase the damage and damage resistance of heavy attacks. And on top of that, damaging a combatant heals the wielder. So this sword is definitely looking quite promising for Grandmaster, Master Nightfalls, or just damage in general. Coming up at number five on this list is gonna be the new Adept Trials weapons. Now we've seen a number of these weapons before. All six of these came in Season of the Worthy, where we got all these weapons. A lot of people like a lot of these, but the Adept weapons come with bonus statistics so once you get them adeptized you can actually increase the stats of a particular thing allowing them to edge over the competition now it's not a significant edge it's gonna be the difference of maybe like five or ten stats in range stability handling but it does technically make it better and there's a number of weapons that are already really good in both PvE and PvP, including a 600 RPM Adaptive Auto, a 55 RPM Aggressive Shotgun, and a 90 RPM Adaptive Snipers, all of which are doing very well in the Crucible. Moving on to number six on this list is gonna be the Xenoclast Legendary Shotgun, which is also a lightweight frame 80 RPM arc shotgun. Now what's significant about this is that the 7th Seraph CQC-12, which is the exact same archetype, is a weapon that I personally find to be the literal number one best legendary PvE shotgun in the game. If you want more information about that, I made a dedicated video about it about a month ago. And this weapon seeks to replace it once the 7th Seraph actually goes out of business. And this weapon, like the CQC-12, has some pretty impressive perks, including trench barrel, auto-loading, and assault mag, which is the literal god roll for pretty much any shotgun. It also has a bunch of other perks that are like field prep, four pull, one two punch, demolitionist, and of course, it is up to the current sunset of 1410. So if you never got yourself a CQC-12 or you want a new version, the Senna class as a world drop is going to be an excellent choice. Coming up at number 7, we have the Hailing Confusion, which is a 390 RPM kinetic pulse rifle. Basically, this is going to be your replacement for Bygones. If you like Bygones, you like 390 pulse rifles, if you want more range in Grandmaster Nightfalls, or if you want to get anti-barrier or unstoppable rounds, and you need a good current sunset pulse rifle, this is going to be your option. Now, admittedly, it technically has worse stats in a lot of categories than the Bygones, but it also has a lot of perks, and again, is available and can be used in the current season. And it also has one of the favorite new perks, Wellspring, which is very strong right now. If you've never heard of Wellspring before, kills with this weapon generate ability energy, and the energy is divided among your uncharged abilities. And from my experience, it's about 30%. So you can spread that 30% among your abilities, which is really strong. It basically puts the Traveler's Judgment out of business on this legendary weapon. Up next at number 8, we have the Guiding Sight 150 RPM Legendary Kinetic Scout Rifle. If you've never heard of this Iron Banner weapon, it's because it's not currently out yet and will be available upcoming Iron Banner. Now generally, I'm not much of a scout rifle user and I don't really value them too much. Currently, we have some values in PvE, the fact that you need overload rounds. Scout rifles are a little bit more consistent and long-lasting than the auto rifle versions, but more than that, there's something very special about this that I really like. Firstly, if you did not know, the 150 RPM scout rifles have the exact same damage, 68 damage headshot, as the 150 RPM hand cannons used to have, meaning they have the exact same time to kill, three shot kill. This has been true for quite a long time. But on top of that, we also got a buff to scout rifles, which increase or widen the aim assistance cone, meaning that they're better at close range, which was their big problem. They kind of sucked in close range with their longer range sights and their weird handling at close range. And on top of that, this particular weapon has Iron Gaze, which is a very special sight, which drastically reduces range for aim assistance. And because this is a 150 RPM scout rifle, it already has a pretty insane range. Putting this perk on this weapon will allow it to, again, presumably be kind of like a 150 RPM hand cannon with a scout rifle. So this is definitely something that I'm looking forward to to see exactly how that works. Coming up at number nine today, we have the High Albedo. Now this is something that I've been looking forward to quite some time. It is a legendary kinetic three burst sidearm. Now if you've seen my top tens before, you know that I really like sidearms. I believe I put Breach Slide, the two burst aggressive, and the three burst adaptives at number two, three, or four, which means I really, really like these weapons. And the three bursts were definitely my favorite, and now we finally have a kinetic option. Really great to replace Breach Light, which ends at this season. And on top of that, it has some pretty insane stats, a much better recoil pattern at 99 instead of like the 91 of Last Hope, and some pretty insane perks, including including Wellspring, which as I've said before, Wellspring is really strong. 
And I bet you're wondering how you can get your hands on this sidearm, because it wasn't available until the first team finished the current raid. And as soon as that happened, you can actually now go to the Exo Stranger, and she'll give you a quest that'll give you your first one, and that will add it to the loot pool. And I would highly recommend you get yourself one. Coming up at number 10 on this list is gonna be the Arctic Haze 720 RPM Solo Auto Rifle. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of 720 auto rifles, but I do know a lot of people are. And if you need a good replacement for the Energy Reckless Oracle from the Garden of Salvation, or you want one of the cool new perks like Thresh, which gives you extra super energy just by getting kills with this weapon, this can be a great opportunity to do that. Currently, I have never actually received this new auto rifle, and I have no idea how to get it. Maybe there's a special quest or maybe I've just been unlucky. Moving on to number 11 on this list, we have the Coriolis 4 660 Charge Time Aggressive Frame Fusion Rifle. Now I'm gonna be honest here, the main and pretty much only reason why this item is on the list is that it's the only or one of the only aggressive frame fusion rifles in the game which if you read the frame description actually says that it fires a horizontal volley that acts kind of like a shotgun shot once you finish charging it more than that burst that you normally see with fusion rifles. And the reason why it's on this list is because it's new and it's different and you may like this version of fusion rifles better than the other ones. However, I found that the horizontal burst kind of makes its range a little bit kaput. Coming up at number 12 is gonna be the Royal Chase 180 RPM Void Scout Rifle. And similarly to the other 150 RPM Scout rifle this is a scout rifle with the opportunity to get the overload rounds if you need an energy slot scout rifle which i imagine not a lot of people have been saving scout rifles this is gonna fill that need for that slot and with that it has some pretty decent stats including full auto auto loading no distractions multi-kill clip quick draw and thresh same reason with the scout rifle with the auto rifle Thresh allows you to get extra super energy on kills with this weapon. And the 180 RPM, in my opinion, is going to be my favorite. It's a good combination of RPM and range and its aim assistance that I like to see. Coming up at number 13, we have the legendary 90 RPM adaptive sniper rifle known as Adored. And this is almost exactly a copy and paste of the beloved, obviously not random rolls with a static roll, but the stats are pretty much exactly the same across the board outside of, I think, maybe inventory size, which is not a big deal. So it may Maintains the same 68 aim assistance that you know and love from Beloved, while also giving you a new static version that's guaranteed at the end of the Ritual Quest. It comes with some pretty good perks, including Killing Wind and Snapshot for PvP, as well as a PvP alternative with Triple Shot and Vorpal. The only thing it's really lacking is the fact that it doesn't have Quick Draw, which is really good for quickly swapping to the weapon, aiming down sights, sprint to fire speed, you know, all of these things are really nice with Quick Draw. Obviously, you can use Dexterity instead, and it kind of solves that issue. So Adored is definitely going to be a great option for both modes. Coming up at number 14 today, we have the Crowd Pleaser, a 120 RPM adaptive heavy void grenade launcher, which is a great replacement for play of the game or edge transit. Obviously, those things have sunset. If you don't have interference six, Crowd Pleaser is a good replacement. And on top of that, it also has some good efficacy in PvE as a void damage heavy option. Lately, I've noticed that there's not very many void damage heavy legendary options because Hammerhead got thrown out the window and we need that replacement. Crowd Pleaser does fit that. However, there are no major damage perks like Full Cord or Swashbuckler. You can still use it as void damage. Moving on to the exotic armors, first up we have the Mask of Bacris. Now this Hunter exotic at first we thought was only just going to change dodge into a teleport, but it does so, so much more. Firstly, yes, it does replace only the stasis dodge with shift, which is a longer range teleport move that also cloaks you for a short amount of time and also increases arc damage for a short time after using your dodge ability, which obviously in PvP gives you a much better, much safer dodge, and in PvP E gives you a DPS setup for arc weapons, which include Anarchy, Work of Coil, and Temptation's Hook, which is really, really strong. Coming up at number 16 is gonna be the warlock exotic known as Dawn Chorus, and this one definitely scares me. If you've never heard of it, its special perk gives Daybreak to do more damage and cause a burn effect. And in general, all burn effects also last longer. And on top of that, you get melee ability energy whenever you burn damage to anyone. This has Celestial Fire and Fusion Grenade written all over it. If you play last season, you know a Tournament of Sky with its Icarus Dodge, with its Celestial Fire damage, with its decent super, is really strong in the Crucible and honestly might still be the strongest subclass in the Crucible, especially after the Stasis nerf to a lot of the Warlock Stasis stuff. And with that, the Fusion Grenades are already really close to solo killing a Guardian if the burn effect lasts long 
longer, you might be able to solo kill a Guardian with a single grenade with low resilience. And coming up at number 17, another Warlock Exotic. Warlock's got really stacked this season, which actually really scares me, and I feel like they really need to nerf this, but it's actually an intended feature. We have the Necrotic Grit. If you haven't heard of it, your melee attacks actually poison the target with dot damage, similar to how Thorn does it with its devour dot damage, and that slowly ticks harder and harder over time the longer the enemy has that dot damage. And that's not all. Killed targets with that poison will release that poison in an AoE to nearby targets and restore melee energy. And again, restoring melee energy, celestial fire. And again, you can hit the enemy from range with that melee, triggering that poison damage and get some melee energy back. And <laughs> it's not over, there's a twist. Because this is technically a devourer item and it gives the enemy the devourer debuff, it works with the thorn devourer dot and the thorn can cause the same AOE explosion from the target skill. So just equip these exotic gauntlets, use the thorn, which is a really, really strong in the crucible, use celestial fire like mad, use a thorn like mad, get extra dot damage over time, cause AOE explosions. This thing looks really strong. I have not yet gotten it, but from what I hear, this thing is really strong. And it probably is also pretty strong in PvE, as long as you avoid being right next to enemies with that melee. And that is gonna be the end of the video. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions or concerns. Let me know if there's something that wasn't on this list that you really think should have been on this list. And of course, tell me why. Because I, just like you, am a Destiny 2 player and I want to find the best of the best. And of course, again, if you have not yet purchased Beyond Light or you want to get Shadowkeep or Forsaken, make sure you do it over at my Nexus page, which is linked in the description down below, where you can buy it for the exact same price as Steam, but also give more money to Bungie and more money to me, the content creator, and no money to the gray market vendors. Well, yeah, that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Vindai Chronic, and I will see you guys on the next one.